I want to welcome everyone to Forge Critical Conversations. This is week two of six weeks. Uh, we are here. Um, I am Maria Franklin, Director of Youth Enrichment for, at Detroit POW, and I'm here with um, Corporal Norwood, who is our uh, uh, police uh, assignee from DPD. Corporal Norwood, welcome. I think you might be on mute, Corporal Norwood. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm still working with the new technology. Uh, so yeah, it's great to be here. You got some traffic over there? Ooh. Oh, and we have Hi. a couple people on mute right now. I mean, they need to be on mute. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's no okay. problem, Zila. Thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you here today with us and excited um, to talk with you. Um, about today's topic, which is fact versus fiction. Um, hope you're excited to be here too. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, we're gonna ask everyone at this time, if you haven't already renamed yourself to go ahead and do that. Um, you should have your name plus your role, whether that be facilitator or a scribe or a youth participant or a visitor. Uh, we do have some visitors um, on the line today. And I want to say welcome and thank you everybody on Facebook who's watching us live. I hope you enjoy the critical conversations that are going to take place today. Um, and uh, Corporal Norwood, yes. what, um, what is the critical conversations? What's the purpose of, of these conversations? Well, the, so the purpose of the critical conversations is to get the youth, uh, allow the youth a chance to express themselves. You know, so many times us as adults, we want to just talk, 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 and we never actually take the time to listen to our youth. So that's the first thing we want to do. We want to do. We want them to uh, give them a platform to express themselves. Secondly, and probably uh, just as important, or maybe even more important, this is a learning opportunity in a fun environment. So uh, we have these conversations with the youth and law enforcement, fully sworn law enforcement. Uh, police officers where we talk about all the social issues that maybe they wouldn't otherwise had a chance to talk about so like last week we actually talked about what are the roles of police officers you know some didn't know what did we ask our police officers to do and today we're going to talk about fact versus fiction when it comes to the law so i'm really interested to know uh, what the students know already and what can we learn from this from each other absolutely and so one of the things you mentioned was youth voice and in uh, one way that we capture the youth voice is through our surveys. Um, so we want to do a quick housekeeping right now. We have some youth on here that may not have taken the survey uh, last week, and we want to make sure that they do that. So um, we'd like to uh, cue some nice survey music, and um, we're going to place that survey right into the chat. And so um, youth, you can go ahead and direct your attention to the chat and grab that survey out of there, just click on it and uh, take that. So we're gonna spend just a couple minutes, two minutes, it's a short survey um, for you to complete that. And when you're done, you can um, type in the chat, done. Yeah, so we'll know to move forward from there. Yep, make sure you type in done. If you're having any trouble uh, pulling up the chat, just go ahead and, and hit the raise your hand button or you can come on, turn your mic on and just let us know that you're having trouble. Hopefully this will be a smooth thing. The survey is real quick and uh, we want to hear your opinion. Yep, and again, this is a youth survey. So go ahead and complete that. And then we're gonna get started with our conversation. Yeah, Thank yeah. you to all of you who have already completed it. Super important. Um, survey is important because it helps us to understand um, how the program works. Was it effective? Was it ineffective? Um, did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, so we'll get the, that feedback from you. I see Medina is already done. She typed in her done uh, that she did the survey. So oh, appreciate you, that, Medina. Ms. Medina. In fact, Medina, uh, how did you pronounce? Uh, well, never mind. Never mind. I just want to make sure that I am pronouncing your name correctly. Is that is that correct, Medina? All right. 
wait about 30 more seconds and then we'll go ahead and get started 30 more. for today i see victor and mason jose is back here with us and awesome. Mr. Kim, good to see you here good to see everybody here um that's, that means a lot that you guys are coming back you're enjoying this and um again police officers and the students can learn from each other through these conversations so i'm pretty excited about that as well if you're done um and you have something that you uh, remember from last week that stood out to you that you enjoy you can go ahead and type that into the chat um, we love to get your, your feedback in that way um, if there was something that you remember from a conversation um if uh there was an impression that you got from one of the police officers um uh, whatever it was whatever it was remember last week was uh the roles of a police officers so was it what you thought it was was it something different uh, did somebody in your room make an impression on you as maria was talking about uh, i know we have some really dedicated police officers here that are dedicating time and some, in fact some of them are actually in a patrol car uh on their break right now hanging out with us so i really appreciate that <laughs> all right great so um i think we are pretty much done with surveys at this point love to hear your feedback you can continue at any point um youth participants or um, facilitators note takers you're welcome to put that feedback in the chat um, based on what we did last week um, everybody should be renamed at this point. Everybody should have their cameras turned on at this point. Um, and just so you know, I, I'm not sure if we, we mentioned it or not, but we're giving out gift cards today. Maybe we'll mention it again. <laughs> we're giving out gifts. So uh, you have an opportunity. You, if you are gonna, uh, super engaged, uh, you are going above and beyond participation, uh, you have an opportunity to win a gift card. So what you're saying is closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. So the more you express <laughs> yourselves, the better chance you are you have to get these gift cards. In fact, yeah. are the officers eligible to get a gift card? Because I would love one if I'm eligible. I could talk all day. <laughs> I mean, you know, if the officers are going above and beyond. Actually, they're, they're not going to be talking that much, though, right? Because we want to hear from the youth. Yeah, that's true. So, that was yes, you passed. <laughs> so um, maybe we'll do something where the officer who worked with that youth, um, they can get a gift card too. <laughs> and I know that they're not here for the gift card. Um, definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, <laughs> and somebody wrote, are the note takers? <laughs> We're going to give the first gift cards to the most engaging students. We'll start with that. All right. We'll start with that. All right. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get started. We, our topic for today, um, first, we're going to talk about the First Amendment. Is that right? Free speech? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's so much going on in the world right now. And I'm sure you students all know, I mean, we have a, we have a new president. Uh, there's a, you're in virtual school, some of you are, and social media is going crazy with all these topics and everything. And one of the things that come up is social justice. So and what is that? I mean, what is free speech? What is um, social justice? I'm curious about what the youth think before we say anything. That's, that's um, right. Let's hear from you all. What, all. what do you think free speech means? You go ahead and type it in there. What does free speech actually mean? And I saw a hand. If you want to um, come off mute, you can do that. Medina, I saw a hand go up. You're welcome to share with us if you want to go off mute. Talking about free Or you can just put them. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Um, I believe the freedom of speech means you have the freedom to act and say whatever you want. So I have the freedom to say whatever, and I can speak freely about a subject, even if somebody else does not want me to speak about that subject. All right. Excellent. A good answer. All right. Uh, we'll take one more, one more quick one. We have a few in the uh, chat right here. We might read a couple of those, but if you want to go ahead and express it. Can I go? What does it mean? Who, who said that? Ida? Did I pronounce yes. it? Yes. Yes. What does free speech mean to you? 
you could you have a right to do something okay do for for example give me an example you have to write you had a right to go to school okay yeah yeah uh I, I like the way you're thinking on that we're talking about free speech and we're, we'll get into it I'm looking at one from Caleb here in our chat, Maria. It says, free speech means having the ability to express yourself verbally in whatever manner you choose. Hmm. Is that true? Is I wonder, true? Um, what do our scribes and our facilitators think? If you want to add that in the chat, you can add that in there. Yeah. And for those who are watching on Facebook, when you think about it, what is free speech? What is your definition of free speech? We've heard from the students, but think about it yourself. What does free speech mean to you? And I just want to thank, um, while we're talking about free speech and conversations, um, I just want to acknowledge Ford Motor Company Fund for giving us this opportunity to have this uh, free speech <laughs> on this, on this uh, Facebook Live. Um, thank you for the generosity and um, supporting us so that we can bring this, uh, the youth voice and elevate it on this platform. Okay. All right. So we have comments coming in. Oh, yeah. What is it? So what is it, Corporal? Um, tell us, because we everybody kind of thinks, you know, we know what it is. And I don't even know that I really know uh, what that means. So. So most people are on track, um, but actually free speech can be broken into three different sections. So we have peer speech, which is a verbal expression of thoughts. And I think that's what most people were talking about, just uh, expression of your verbal thoughts. And then we have free speech plus. So free speech plus is your thoughts plus an action. For example, you can you can say uh, Black Lives Matter at a rally, something like that. So you're holding signs and you're giving verbal commands or or just expressing yourself verbally. And then this assembly. So you have the right to gather and talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about in a peaceful manner. Uh, but one thing that sometimes we forget when we talk about free speech is that it does have some limitations to it. So a couple mm -hmm. of students, yeah, there are there are limitations. Yeah, I'm looking at things in the chat and that's similar to what I see, like Paul said, basically to say what you want without bringing harm to others. And Brenda said to express yourself as long as it, as it, as it is not laced with hate. And Melissa said having the ability to say anything but not free from repercussion. Mm, but not free from repercussion. Those are some really good things. And so I guess the debate gets into, um, does it harm somebody? So for example, if you have a group with a history that has caused harm, do that group still have the right to say what they want to say in a manner? And the first thing that I come to is uh, maybe uh, a group like the Ku Klux Klan, or some people would say Black Lives Matter. Uh, cause harm? Do they still have rights? Can they say what they want to say? But I want to talk about how it applies to each and every one of our students when it comes to free speech. And so we're going to talk about those type of things. Uh, Is that what they're going to talk about in their breakout rooms? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to kind of dig into it because uh, some things we may know, some things we may be unclear on, and then hopefully again, we'll come through with a better understanding. And all of this is done to help protect your own rights. Because when you know your rights, then you won't get yourself in trouble, especially as a young student, right? So you need mm -hmm. to be within your rights when you're expressing yourself, especially when it comes to free speech. All so, right, well, it looks like we have some poll questions. I know we have, we're going to go into breakout rooms and um, the youth are going to talk about free speech. Thank you for giving us that foundation. And thank you, youth participants. Thank you, everyone, for... Um, sharing what you thought it was right um early on before we even got that um that those valuable nuggets from corporal norwood um but yeah you're gonna have a chance to go talk about this we have lots of questions um you may have thoughts of your own that are you know outside of the questions we prepared feel free to um bring those things into the discussion you especially uh, feel free to bring those things into the discussion and um we have a quick poll to give you really quickly before you go into the breakout rooms. So we're gonna prepare to bring that to you. Gotta love these polls, right? Because we, we wanna to keep know. it, we wanna keep it interactive. Yes. <laughs> you know what's on their mind. 
what's on their mind. <laughs> uh, are we are we ready to launch the polls? Yes, we are. Oh, all right. Okay. Yep. So we have the poll up now. We can um, cue some nice music. You can go ahead and read that answer, and we'll share the responses once everybody has submitted. This is a poll that everyone can take. Um, youth can take it. Facilitators can take it. The scribes can take it. Any visitors can take this poll. So at this time, go ahead and um, put in your responses. Hey, Maria, are the are our friends on Facebook, are they able to see the poll question as well? I'm not sure. Let's make let's read it just in case. So For number them. one, it says, what does the term exigent circumstances mean? Mm. Exigent, exigent circumstances. circumstances. Okay. All right. What does that mean? And options? Uh, so the first option is says circumstances that are of such urgency as to justify a warrantless search or entry, right? That means it's extreme. You can go in without a warrant, go into this building without a warrant or search without a warrant. The second option is circumstances that demand law enforcement to provide a warrant, no matter the urgency of the situation. So does that mean that you have to get a warrant no matter how urgent it is? And the last one, what does the term exigent circumstances mean? Last one is I have no idea, but I would like to learn, right? <laughs> and that's fine too, right? <laughs> All right, love that. And then question two is, why exactly. was Detroit PAL founded? Um, is it to make friends? Was it to build positive relationships between community and police officers? Or was it to help you find their greatness? Why was it founded? In 1969, when it was founded 52 years ago, yeah. what was the purpose? What was the purpose? I wonder how many people were around when it was founded. <laughs> how many people were around? How many when people were around on this call was around? Oh. Straight Pal was founded. Well, I wasn't around. <laughs> There's at least one person that was. <laughs> you? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All, right. <Maybe> not. <laughs> all right so did we get any questions any polls um responses are you all able to answer this poll you have any yes uh... yes we did Got a all right do, can we see the responses justin it's pulling up what does the term exigent circumstances mean all so, right wow so a whopping 60% believes exigent circumstances mean circumstances that are of such urgency as to justify a warrantless entry or search. So that means going into my house without a warrant. Without a warrant. Exigent circumstances means someone, someone can go into, come into my home and search without a warrant. Is that what that's saying? That is exactly that what most what people believe. believe? That's okay. What, 60% who took the poll believe that. Yeah. 60%. Okay. And the other 30%? Uh, 30% said uh, circumstances that demand law enforcement to provide a warrant, no matter the urgency of the situation. All right. So 30% believe that this means you have to have a warrant no matter what. No matter what. And then 10% said, we well, very honest. Yeah. <laughs> said I have, have no idea. idea. <laughs> Appreciate the honesty. <laughs> All right. And what's the answer? What is the answer to that? So the answer would be that 60% circumstances that are of such urgency as to justify a warrantless entry or search. So a quick example would be, uh, say, if there was a immediate danger in the house, say if an officer got to, let's say, a home and upon his observations, his or observations, they saw that maybe a life was in, in danger. And so they don't need a warrant to enter a home in that circumstance. That would be an exigent circumstance, exigent circumstance. So they can go in without a search warrant uh, because it's, it's happening right here, right now, and it's extremely urgent. So that would be a, a, an example of that. So if you said that, if you were part of that 6%, go ahead and give yourself a little pat on the back because you were absolutely correct. Or you can clap. I see Ida, she's clapping. That's fine too. <laughs> Right too. Do your thing. All right. And then the second one, we got 70%. Nobody said, okay, the question was, why was Detroit Powell founded? 
Nobody said to make friends. Okay. Zero. 70% said to build positive relationships between community, community and police. And 30% said to help you find their greatness. So what's the answer? Well, two of those are really good answers, right? <laughs> two yes. of those straight pal does. But the reason that it was actually founded was to build positive relationships between the community and police officers. And I think we're doing a great job of that. Yeah, I like to believe so. Um, just starting with this Zoom call right here with Forest Critical Conversations, I think we're building positive relationships in this format. So if you were part of that 70%. You are correct. You. And that other 30%, guess what? Um, that is our current mission, right? To help you find their greatness. So um, I'm glad that some people are in tune with that. Um, clearly, that's why you chose it, because you know that's what we have set out to do. Um, so at this time, thank you, everybody, for taking the poll. Hopefully you have fun with that. Um, we're going to start transitioning into breakout rooms. So um, just hold tight, and you're going to be re repositioned into another into another room. And don't forget. We love participation. We love participation. All right, everybody's right, moving. So we have a handful who have not been assigned just yet. Um, we'll see them as soon as everyone is relocated. See who's who's unassigned. I see Daisha Nay Lynn. How you doing? Kayla. Okay. All right. And while we're doing that again for our Facebook listeners and watchers, uh, this is the second week of our Ford's Critical Conversations where we partner our youth with police officers. And last week we talked about what are the roles of police. And this week we're talking about fact versus fiction when it comes to the law. And we're kind of touching on the First Amendment uh, this week as it applies to uh, what's fact and again, what's fiction. Can you say what you want to say? Can you do what you want to do? Or are there repercussions? What does uh, free speech mean to you? So we'll be talking about those things uh, for the next hour or so, hour and a half or so, uh, as the youth are going to their breakout rooms with their facilitator uh, or their police officer. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's interesting, you know, when we did the last poll, Maria, that the, uh, they are in tune with the helping youth find their greatness. And that is uh, Detroit PAL's mission. That's really uh, exciting. Really exciting. The first person that I heard say that was the current CEO, uh, Mr. Robert Jamison. I know he has a passion of helping youth find their greatness um, when it comes to sports and what we call youth enrichment, things that PAL do that are outside of sports. Uh, Robert, you wanna just, how did you come up with that real quick? <laughs> Yeah, hello everyone. Just happy that everybody's joining. Um, I know that everybody's off to their first breakout. Excited to see what's gonna happen after they come back from it. When you start thinking about helping you find their greatness, um, you start looking at all the different things that people can uh, become interested in. And a lot of times it just comes around getting exposure, right? If you got exposed to something, it's amazing how you, it piques your interest and then it leads into something that you can begin to work at and become great at. There's so many different skill sets that people have innately, meaning that it comes with them, it's a part of their genes, and then there's some that people develop, right? And so at Detroit Pal, our goal is to be able to expose our youth through the attraction of sports, aligning them with youth enrichment programming that then help them to find their greatness. And it couldn't be done without Corporal Norwood, uh, Maria Franklin, and a lot of the other people that are on this call because it's all around being able to see how far they were able to come and see if we get people to go farther and farther. So thank you for all you guys are doing. Uh, looking forward to the conversations today and can't wait to take down some notes because I'm sure there's going to be at least one or two things that I'll be able to take from this to be able to help somebody else. Thank you for that, Robert. I really appreciate that. And again, you know, being one of the uh, the great leaders of Detroit Pal, you allow us, you set these things up, make these things possible, these four critical conversations and all the youth enrichment. So again, from the whole police department, uh, thank you for allowing us to, to work with youth in such an impactful way. All right. Yes, 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 thank you. I see all Kiana right, so. still here. Does Kiana need to go into a room? Kiana, yes, Tate needs to go into a room with uh, the translator. 
Yep. Um, so we'll make sure she gets there. Um, uh, hey, I was gonna keep our translator and uh, Kiana. I'm sorry if it's Kiana or Kiana. I'm not sure. I was gonna keep them both in this room. If okay, perfect. Yeah, fine, fine. Because we like her. She's always been able to express herself and she always has some really good things to say. So I'm happy. They're good choice. Very good choice. Um, and then Siobhan Young is uh, should be in a breakout room. She's a facilitator. She has her hand raised. You can um, go off mute. I'm sorry. Um, they sent me over to breakout room four and I thought I was supposed to be in three and then it disconnected. I didn't write the question down for four. Can you repeat? And I was disconnected. Yep, so you can go ahead and go back into three and just um, when we call on you, just you have them to ask those questions or answer those questions for group three. That's fine. Okay. Honey. Um, you. Yeah, the ones that we originally assigned you is great. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So just keep the same questions that we gave you regardless of which um, group number they put you in. All right, cool. Um, anybody else that needs to go into a breakout room? Looks like we are, we have Kim Selman um, and Miss uh, Dr. Snyder is on the line. Thank you both for joining us from Bessemer, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> All right, um, and Miss Kim uh, is facilitating, correct? Correct. All right, so um, she can go into one of the rooms and do some co-facilitation. Um, so if you want to just put her into one of the rooms that we um, have set up, Justin. Thank you for joining us. Hey. It's really cool that we have Ms. Tate here uh, hanging out with us as a student. So I just want to ask uh, her a really quick question uh, through a translator. Um, so. My question is, uh, what are your thoughts on students using their clothing to express themselves in school? Right? We all know that there's different types of clothing. Uh, should you be allowed to wear whatever it is that you want? Can your t-shirt says whatever it is uh, that you're feeling for that day? Just what are your thoughts on youth expressing themselves through clothing in school? All right, and so they're translating. And I know Ms. Uh, Kayana is very, very um, thoughtful. So I'm excited to hear what she has to say. And if we could have uh, Ms. Jessica unmute herself and let us know uh, what's happening here. That would be amazing. Um, I think there should be some restrictions on the student's dress code. And who should determine those restrictions and what should the restrictions be? I think the school or the principal. Okay, okay. Restrictions, restrictions, hmm. So here's one that might be controversial. This will be my last question for her right now. Uh, do you think it's okay for students to wear a shirt that maybe has a cannabis leaf on the front of it in school? Why or why not? No, I don't think that's appropriate. But it's free speech. Or is it not? But it's really not appropriate. It's not given the, you know, right image. I think something, you know, you know, maybe black clothing, you know, black pride, but nothing, you know, with marijuana, cure cannabis. Um, I don't think that should be acceptable. Interesting. And, and you know, Maria, sometimes we say our students aren't ready to be leaders. So I'm listening to Miss Tate right here, Kiana, and she seems like she's only about, uh, positive reinforcement, positive images, which I think we need a lot more of in our mm -hmm. schools, you know, not so many followers. Absolutely. Um, and I think she's absolutely a leader, right? Um, right now, 
And, and that's what this is about, giving the students and the youth a platform to show their leadership um, because they are um, the future and they are also the now, right? So um, they have thoughts out. So thank you, Kayana, for, for those thoughtful responses. Um, and it's, it's nice to fingers. hear. Yeah, it's nice thank to you. hear. Thank you. Fingers. Fingers. There nice you to go. hear um, yeah, what you think go. about that and and um and why, right? And so you just I, what I hear there is um, self regulation, um, which is very very mature. Um, and it's, it's good mm -hmm. to see that our youth have that because um, you know we can't just say whatever we want to say or do whatever we want to do because sometimes our actions uh, they affect others. So we need to consider that. Yeah, you know, you say sometimes, I, I think all the time they affect others because whether it affect them right then and there or later on down the road, you know, we set the tone, we set the, the cultural norms of what's mm -hmm. in our own community. So the more positive reinforcement, the more positive thoughts that are said, the more that it will blossom, the more that it will spread. And um, we can continue to help our community uh, prosper and be, become better. And I know there's, there's so much going on in the schools with signs and, and um, there's different youth groups within the school. So I'm really interested to know, again, what they feel about and what they think about this uh, free speech. Um, who should determine the guidelines? You know, should it be school administration? Should it be the government? Should it just be the students themselves, you know, vote upon what's, what's appropriate and what's not? I think all of these things come into play um, when it comes to cultural and social norms. So who should set the standards? Um, and I'm gonna ask again, Kiana, who should set the standards amongst her peers when it comes to things within the school? Um, should it be all school administration or should the students actually have a say so? And why does she feel the way that she feels on either one? We'll give her an interpreter a chance to uh, send the message while we wait for the answer. Again, this week we're talking about free speech and what's fact, what's fact versus fiction when it comes to your rights. I think um, the school and the police officers, they can, you know, set those rules. The students, you know, should not follow their own, you know, their own rules. They shouldn't make up their own rules. They should go ahead and, you know, follow what was already established. Hmm. Yeah. And I want to make sure that I'm saying her name. Is it Kayana or Kiana? I think it's Kayana. Yes, it is Kayana. Kayana. All right. So if I said it wrong before, I apologize. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you for those uh, responses. I think now we want to go ahead and show a video. We have uh, so many great programs going on at PAL, the Police Athletic League. Um, and we want to be able to just showcase uh, one of the videos that we're going to show uh, in a second is our, from our summer camp um, that took place this past summer. It was the second one um, since I've been here at PAL um, doing youth enrichment. And um, some pretty amazing things happen, kind of magical in magical. a way. Let's take a look. Oh, look at the babies. <laughs> And the summer camp was for ages, um, what is it, middle school and through middle school? Yep, it was, um, we had six to 10 years old in six summer camp. So I'm looking here, look like people have on the costumes. I see an Iron Man in there, I see a soccer player, even Batman in the middle. So look like they're having a good time. We'll get this video going. Um, I wanna see what they're smiling about right here. <laughs> I mean, they're super happy. Super happy. Love it. Love the smiles. Learning about great, being great with our great model. Great model. Goal setting, resilience, facing healthy lifestyle, accountability, and teamwork. And I also notice the journals that were in that video. Yeah, so the students got a chance to uh, write down their thoughts each day, the highs and the takeaways, and I think they really enjoyed that. I'm Corporal Paisley, 23-year veteran of the Detroit Police Department, currently assigned to the Detroit Police Athletic League, also known as Detroit PAL. I am truly honored and privileged to have the opportunity to be a part of such an amazing organization.
just finished up with our 2021 summer day camp in which our kids were able to engage with officers in games, sports, STEM programs, arts and crafts, and much more. We were a part of the Detroit PAL summer camp and we decided to bring a program that was an extension to our Young People Travel Global Edge learning journeys where we introduced our students to different countries across the world and give them a opportunity to see the differences and the similarities. Look at that. Look like STEM is going on. STEM at Power, we had the drones apprenticeship program going. We had Ecotech Science there. Of course, the kids are being physical with sports and um, and learning about global travel, learning about the world. Global travel. So I left in there. Got to give it up to my left hand. <laughs> give it up for the lefty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Foundation. I know those who are watching at home, they're going, oh, so nice. Oh, the talent show, remember that. is having a gaming day for the kids where they took part in playing on PS5s, Xbox S's, Nintendo Switches. Detroit Pals mission is helping youth find their greatness. I just want all the kids out there to know that you are great. How about that? That's a great shot right there. Thank you, thank you so much for that video. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so um, you think we'll be doing it again next year? I hope so. It was one of my highlights of the year. Doing definitely summer. doing it again next year. Um, you know, it's just a great opportunity for so many exposures for the kids. And um, I mean, it, it's just a, a great depiction of the work that we do and the reason why I get up every day and energized and, and ready to come to work and, and do this um, this labor of love for for the youth. So definitely going to do it again. Well, that was done during the uh, summertime uh, after school, maybe a couple of weeks after school. We did a couple of sessions. So look for that. If you're watching, look for that coming up uh, this summer. I would start looking for it right when school is about to end sometime in maybe May, I would say, uh, April, May. Uh, visit us on social media with the Detroit Pal because there was a lot to offer there. And I mean, you got there, the kids got there at about what, 8 30, 9 o'clock, and was hung out with us till, was it four o'clock, five o'clock? Yeah, nine, nine to four, nine to four. Monday four. through Friday. Um, and that was for four whole weeks. They and got they fed, they, you know, snacks, entertainment. And you mentioned some of the other things that were happening in there. Uh, young people travel Global Edge, mm -hmm. where they got a chance to learn about uh, different cultures from around the world. So we want to throw a shout out to uh, Young People Travel Global Edge for partnering with us. Also, you mentioned Ecotech, uh, which is part of the STEM program. We had the uh, Game Game Truck, which is a mobile video gaming truck that came out that was actually uh, donated. And it was owned by one of our officers that are here uh, at Detroit in the um, Critical Conversations. So Officer George, you know, uh, donated a little bit of time there. So there's so many things that Detroit mm -hmm. now has to offer. And mm -hmm. we're thankful for all of our partners. Yep, our, um, our drones apprenticeship program, our youth are learning how to um, do applied trigonometry. Mm. Uh, so that's pretty cool because, uh, you know, Anytime you can understand why you're learning the math and apply it to something you care about, that's a lot more fun than just doing it and saying, I mean, I don't know what you're going to use it for. So 
Just do well, it. Here, <laughs> he talked about, right, I don't know what I'm using for. So <laughs> one of my police assignments, I was at the uh, Rocket Mortgage Golf Classic. And you see those beautiful shots of the golf course up in the air. Well, there's a guy whose job is to go wherever the um, PGA Tour is, whichever city it is, just to capture those shots. And so he's using drones and he says he's living very comfortably getting mm -hmm. those shots as a drone. Is it a drone pilot? As yeah, well as yeah, a drone pilot. And so, you know, that's our kids are getting an opportunity to do that, to get their um, pilot license. They're, they're really being prepared and, um, you know, they're, they're learning how to do the videos, capture those aerial shots from up in the sky um, with those drones. They're, they're coding the flight patterns for the drones and then they're flying them based on the code that they, that they um, created. Um, and so, so that's really cool. They're you know, coming around and you get to practice at our PAL events. Um, yeah, yeah and, they're, and then they get to apply it in the, in the real world as consultants. As so, consultants, wow. So that's yeah. what's up. That's what's up. You know, like you mentioned, you're not only learning something, but you're seeing how it uh, can apply directly to a, a job opportunity. And that is something that we need so much in this community because uh, Detroit PAL offers the opportunity for students to kind of figure it out. You know, when you're young, I know for me, I didn't know what I wanted to do all the way through high school. I, I knew what I didn't want to do, right? You had that list but you don't have a list of the things that you really, really want to try. It's just like, oh, it just sounds cool. I want to be, I don't know, an engineer. I want to be a doctor, but you don't really get a chance to experience um, what it's like to go into those, into those professions. So mm -hmm. this gives the kids the opportunity to actually be hands-on uh, for an affordable price. So that's so what's really cool. Again, 50 years being around, you like to think that we've been doing something right for all these years. <laughs> Very, very cool. All right, so um, looks like it's time for us to come back from our breakout rooms. So I don't know, let's see if everybody has actually returned. Not quite yet. Not quite um, yet. We'll be returning in just a moment. So uh, prepare to welcome them back. And um, I think we might have another poll uh, for them as well. Another poll, right. So they're in their breakout rooms right now talking about the elements of uh, free speech and which is their first amendment rights. Even young people have first amendment rights, which is uh, the right to free speech. So they're, they're having some discussion about that with their police officer. And for those of you who are just joining us, you might be watching on Facebook. Uh, just a reminder, we are here. Detroit PAL is here with other municipalities around the country, um, including Bessemer PAL, Houston yes. PAL yes. and, and others. And um, we are we are having critical conversations about policing and um, positive solutions and um, you know how can we do more of this throughout the the country and um, you know we we're doing this on Tuesdays every Tuesday um, with the exception of next week because we're off for the holiday but every Tuesday between now and December 21st we'll be here from 6 p.m to 8 p.m um, and we see that everybody's coming back. Yes, they're back. This um, ought to be oh. good. <laughs> this ought to be good. Yeah, I see Ida's back. I see Timothy back. Paris, everybody's coming back. Good, good, good. Yes. So we're interested to know what was going on in those breakout rooms because we don't have access to what you guys are talking about. And neither do the people here uh, watching on our social media, Facebook live. So. This ought to be interesting because we're talking about free speech, your First Amendment right, even as a young person, free speech and what it means to you. What are, are there limitations? Can you say what you want to say? Can I wear what I want to wear? Who should be responsible for um, what I wear? Who should regulate it? Should anybody regulate it? We want to hear from you. Let's All go right. to group one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Before we jump into those uh, discussions, we have another mm. poll. So we're going um, to do that really quickly and um, respond. And then we're going to jump right into breakout room um, discussion question, uh, responses from the youth. All right. So we can go ahead and launch. All right. Poll question number one. How old do you have to be to be a police officer? Hmm. Is it 18 years old? Is it 21 years old? 16, 
or 25. And I'm assuming we're talking about a Detroit police officer. So we'll go with that. How old do you have to be to be a Detroit police officer? 18, 21, 16, or 25. And I'm curious if that's different in different states, which we may have uh, one or two on here that might want to provide some insights. Oh, if it is different in their site or if it's the, uh, in their state or if it's the same <laughs> state. Um, so we'll go ahead and let's get the feedback first. We'll get our, our answer and then we'll get a little feedback from others on the call. That's a great idea because it is uh, different in different municipalities and on different levels of government. Uh, federal has different regulations and rules as opposed to uh, some of the county or in some of the just smaller local municipalities. So right. we're talking about Detroit police uh, for this particular poll. But like you said, we want to hear from our law enforcement from around the country who's also on this uh, critical conversation. All right, cool. So do we have res the results of the poll? And the results are, well, only 3% said 25 years old. So yeah, good for you. Um, <laughs> the most popular answer was 18, like 18, like right out of high school. And if you said 18 for Detroit police officer, you would be correct. You do have to have your high school diploma though, right? So yeah, and 50%, 56% said 18. So you guys who said, uh, 56, I mean, who said 18 would be correct. The, no, the next most popular answer was 21. Nope, not for Detroit, it is 18. So if you said 18, you can go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back again. Good answer. Get it, I see you. All, All right. right. And then do we have um, any other officers or representatives from another state um, that can share what the legal age is to become a police officer in your area? That was a good question. I just asked the officer down the hallway because I didn't know. <laughs> but in the city of Bessemer, you have to be 21. Okay. And where are you from? I'm sorry. What well, Birmingham, but it's a little city right outside of Birmingham, Bessemer, Alabama. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank they say you can begin, but to be sworn in, you you have to be 21. Mm. Awesome. Cool. Do so that's anybody else? All right, we have any other, uh, visitors with us from another municipality. All right. Okay. Awesome. All right. Now let's go ahead and get into the discussion. The discussion, free speech and your rights. Uh, I want to hear what came out of there. Group number one. With Odessa. <laughs> so Odessa's group. Let's hear Odessa. from Odessa. Okay. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Howdy. So, hi. So I had uh, group one, which was, we had some very interesting answers. Um, for the first question, can you say whatever you want to your friends at school or should the school regulate your interaction with others? Um, Caleb uh, mentioned that um, you can say whatever you want to say, but to a certain extent, as far as um, you shouldn't say anything that's gonna harm yourself or harm others, maybe hurt someone's feelings. Um, basically treating others the way you wanna be treated basically in, in your words as you express them. Excellent. Uh, yeah. That was Mr. Then, thank okay. you. <laughs> thank you for that. And thank you, Caleb. Cool, cool. Can we hear from uh, the next group? Who was in group number two? Well, let's look, that's George. So let's go with George for that George. one. George, came out of your group. Hey, everyone. Um, myself and Kim from Alabama, we had um, we had Joe as our only child again. And so <laughs> we really talked about having these expressions on our shirts and wearing them inside of school. And Joe really, really came up with some good points. So I'm going to go ahead and let Joe talk about how he felt with expressing himself with shirts and everything like that. Yeah, so I uh, I brought up a, a Supreme Court case from back in the 70s. I forget exactly what it was called, but it was basically two students wore black armbands with the peace sign and uh, protest of the Vietnam War. And the school said no, 
but the Supreme Court ruled that it was it, if they said no, it would violate their freedom of speech. So um, I said freedom of expression should be allowed in schools as long as it's as long as it's not um, obstructing education and as long as it's not hateful to a group of people or one singular person. Then we also talked about how we express ourselves outside of our work or our profession. Wow, love that. I love how you tied in um, history events that have taken place um, within the judici judicial judicial system. <laughs> All right, so that was pretty cool. Thank you, Joe. Joseph went and did research on this, man. He's he did some research. You're not going to catch Joe slipping, that's for certain. <laughs> that's why Joe is our youth of the year. Youth of the year. <laughs> you know, for that and many reasons, I think we all should give uh, uh, Joe and everyone else some fingers, you know, because we do fingers for the spirit. When we like something, this is how we do. And uh, yeah, youth of the year from Joe. So sweet, 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 sweet. We have time. We have time for more, uh, Maria? Yep, we can do. We have two more. We have um, Siobhan and Gaines. Both of them have rooms. Okay, Officer Gaines, right? Okay, all right. Uh, talk to us. What happened? What's going on? Who's your representative? So last week, I graded myself as a, a C minus or a D plus. I've been working all week on this. <laughs> <laughs> Just when I thought I had it together, uh, on the breakout rooms, it said group one. It didn't say group four. So we play in group four. Then you guys set me up and gave me group one. So, you know, I can't get this right. But anyway, so we took group one questions. Uh, we had a dynamic group. We had Ms. Drake as our scribe. We had Allison, who's 19. Everybody knows Allison. And we had Jeremiah the Goat, who's 13. The uh, Goat. The right. Goat. Yeah. Jeremiah the Goat. So we went with uh, the questions for group one, since it said group one. And question one was, can you say whatever you want to friends at school? Or should the school regulate your interactions with others? And Allison, who was uh, cooking hamburgers at the time, and she said, <laughs> that's hamburger in Michigan. Allison, you care to uh, elaborate on your answer about that? Can you say whatever you want? Uh, to friends at school or should the school regulate your interactions with each other? Yeah, definitely. So basically, I was just saying the fact that um, naturally, we're already regulated and control with everything we can and cannot say, whether it's in school or in an outside environment. <laughs> so whether we can admit it or not, there are a lot of things, whether we would like to express ourselves or not, that we just can and cannot do. There are certain things we cannot wear in school. There are certain places we cannot be. There are certain things we cannot say. We all like to say that we have freedom to express ourselves in um, certain communities or certain groups, especially with school. But at the end of the day, if you say the wrong thing and somebody interpret it wrong, that's called bullying. So it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it just needs to come from a place of understanding within both sides it needs to be a vice versa thing so it will never be a point where you can and cannot say certain things because regulation comes from a deeply rooted thought not from a certain place all right so thank you for that and i just want to have a follow-up for you um, in terms of how do you feel about that youth are you okay with that how are you going to express yourself um, are you still able to express yourself with those type of limitations, if you will? Um, how, how do you get your, your, um, your opinions and your thoughts out? You can put that in the chat or and we can take a couple of hands. If, if you want, want to speak, go ahead and put your hand up using the, um, the I, reaction uh, tool. All right, can I go? Yeah, I think Timothy wants to say sure. something. All right. Um, I feel that um, uh, the students should be able to wear um, clothing they can express themselves with. Um, 
And I feel that if the parents have a complaint um, about it or somebody felt harmed by it, then um, that's the, the student or the parents can make a complaint and uh, to the school board and then they could um, figure out how they should um, make rules for clothing or stuff like that. All right, love that. Love that. All right, that's good feedback. Because you know, it doesn't just stop with clothing. You know, what if uh, you wanted to dye your hair multiple colors? That would be an expression of free speech as well. We talked about the three different forms of free speech. So we'll be what saying- about, uh, so what about um, for the youth on the call? Have you have you ever um, wanted to say something that you couldn't? Did you say it anyway? <laughs> or did somebody say something to you that may have been them operating their free speech, but maybe it wasn't, um, maybe it rubbed you the wrong way? And if so, how did that make you feel? What are your thoughts on how that affects, how, how you apply that to the free speech um, law? Can I cover this one? Who is that? Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. Yes. Yeah, my camera isn't working right now. But uh, right. there was this one time we were in class and the teacher was really heated because uh, we weren't necessarily being attentive or uh, my classmates weren't uh, listening to him. So uh, he was heated. And then this uh, girl, it didn't happen to me personally, this uh, female, she uh, pushed him to the last thing and she was screaming at him and all that. So he slipped out and said, this is, you're acting like a hood rat right now, which was uh, him operating free speech, but we were in a school environment. So the uh, kids were like, oh my God, he just called her a hood rat, uh, blah, 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 all that. But I'm like, uh, but y'all are pushing him to his point. It's really not his fault. And they all wanted to get on him for it. It was really, really sad, actually. Mm. Okay, I have a question. I'm sorry, I have a question. Does that have to do with the issue of the girl acting a certain way or because hood rat is scribed to something that we use derogatorily and negatively in a certain community or certain race? Because yes, you can be pushing someone to their point, but it's a certain point that something becomes disrespectful and something becomes not just expressing yourself. Um, I do believe that it would, uh, the way that it came out, no, I don't believe that he was expressing it towards anyone. He was a white teacher uh, and he didn't get in trouble for it because uh, the teachers, other teachers knew what he was, uh, that we were, they were being bad in there. And so he didn't say it towards her, necessarily towards our race, because he's one of the nicest teachers there, actually. Uh, he was just saying it because I don't really know why he was saying it, but it wasn't really directed towards anyone's race or anything. Mm -hmm. So I'll say this to everyone. Um, it does not necessarily m matter what your intent was. It's how it was interpreted. So that's what you're going to be judged on, uh, how it was interpreted. Not your intentions, but what somebody, what a reasonable person, how a reasonable person could interpret that uh, information of what was said. So always keep that in mind. This is some really good dialogue that we have here. And uh, Marie, you said that we had Siobhan, was it Siobhan? Hey, Wood, for, for the record, those two were in my group. Just, <laughs> oh, for okay, record. for the record. All right, Officer Gaines here. Here you go, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Like, it's hard. Um, all right, so uh, we have a couple things. We're running just a little bit um, beyond our, our time schedule, but the conversation is good. And so, you know, I want to definitely get that out. Um, we have a couple things. Cop stop. This is where we give you the opportunity to ask any question you want of a police officer. So um, I'm gonna ask you all to, if you have a question, you can go ahead and um, put it in the chat you, or you can save it and think if you don't have a question, you can um, put it in the chat at any point between now and the end of this session, um, go ahead and put it in the chat. We'll take it and we make sure, we'll make sure that every single one of your questions get addressed, whether it's on this, uh, Zoom platform with us together or on our social media platforms, we'll answer them live on uh, Instagram. 
and we may do TikTok or something like that, but definitely Instagram. Uh, we're going to answer those questions. So you can add them at any point. The other thing is um, we're going to do a trivia question, but we'll do that at the end, but we're going to give, um, so be listening intently because we're going to ask a question later. And if you have the answer, you can win a gift card for that. Um, and then lastly, before we go on to our breakout sessions for the second time, um, we want to give a brief overview of the Fifth Amendment um, with Corporal Norwood, just to give us some, um, some context before we go into the second breakout room. Yep. So uh, we're talking about the uh, Fifth Amendment, uh, the right to remain silent. Or is it the Fourth Amendment, the unreasonable search and seizure? I, well, a little bit of both. So uh, right. we talked about the uh, Fourth Amendment. So right, uh, unreasonable search and seizure. Uh huh. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, that means that there needs to be, uh, on certain levels, a right or or circumstances or a certain set of facts where officers can stop and seize you, right? And when I say stop, that means stop you, stop you where you're going. Uh, at that moment, you're not free to leave. And seizure, meaning whether it's arrest or take things from you legally, uh, you know, for evidence. So the Fourth Amendment addresses unreasonable search and seizure. When okay. does that apply and when it don't apply? All right. And then what about the Fifth Amendment? So the Fifth Amendment kind of comes uh, after your Fourth Amendment. Uh, given that maybe you are taking, uh, you're being questioned or you're being under investigation. Fifth Amendment is the right to remain silent. When does that apply? When doesn't it apply? Right? Um, and those are the things that they're going to talk about in their breakout rooms. We're going to address a couple of questions because what's fact and fiction may be a little confusing to some of our students and to some of our listeners. All right? We spend a lot of time on this in the academy. And so we have, as police officers, we have a, a pretty good understanding, but we wanna make sure that the students' rights are protected and that they understand what's going on. Uh, did we, do you have, we, did we forget about group five? Which one was that? That's group five, <laughs> I, Ida and KK. Just forgot about my girls. Oh, I'm sorry, Ida and KK, Paisley. <laughs> and all also right. mine. Okay, I know. Yeah. You so, all right, so we have two, one minute each share out okay <laughs> start with miss young let's start with miss young and her uh, representative so let's go to you one minute for your response okay. we had uh breakout room three and our question was should kids be allowed to say whatever they want to parents and be protected by free speech and we have right. mason who's going to um represent our breakout room okay. mason can you tell them what we discussed in our breakout room Should be kids, Mason, are you there? You might have to unmute Mason. We talk about the freedom of speech towards our parents. Yes. What do we say? Should you be able to say whatever you want to your parents? No. We, we say it because of why. Why shouldn't we be able to? Because, um, like, if you say everybody is a negative, they, it could really hurt them and you know, you know you're going to get into some serious trouble and they really want your the best for you but like let's say um it really hurts your parents feelings if you're being not rude to them it's like, really it's like, yeah you know, you know <laughs> since like, how they care so much about you yeah yeah and then we also stated that you should be able to, as long as it's respectful, correct? And they take it in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any and other thoughts on that? Um, from, from other youth, thoughts on, anybody feel opposite? Like you should be able to say whatever you want to your parents and how would you do that? Yeah. What, if, what if your parent, it might be wrong. Oh God, we know that never happens, but no. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, how, what, should you be able to say whatever or how, how do you handle that I think it should go to a certain extent um but if that's the case then parents 
uh, agreed and understandable that this person came from your literal, like, yourself. This person is your DNA. You produce this person. And, you know, at the end of the day, they should respect you because of the things that you're able to provide. But that is technically what you're supposed to do with your child. And certain stuff like calling your child out of their name or disrespecting your child, bringing up stuff that you know might harm both of you guys' relationship and vice versa shouldn't be something that we're completely okay with. Agreed that the child shouldn't be able to say any and everything because at the end of the day, disrespect is disrespect. And you shouldn't be able to cuss your parent out just because you feel a certain type of way. That's still your mama. <laughs> so I, I do think here. <laughs> it seems like like it seems like most people agree that you know, they believe in free speech, but there's also some consequences if you go across that line. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We want to make sure we get to Officer Paisley's group uh, before we go into these breakout rooms. Officer Paisley, what's happening over there with you and your, your neck of the woods? All right. So the, the best for last here. <laughs> so I have uh, uh, Ida and Miss KK. And uh, I hope we got this right because it's a lot of questions. We did, uh, we went over all four questions. So I'll let Ida and KK decide which uh, ones they want to discuss. And they're going to kind of tag team. Well, let's just pick one because we have to, we have like two, one to two minutes that we can do um, before we go into break our room. So pick one question. And they can tag team it. Okay, Ida. Ida's going to start us off. Uh, Ida and then uh, KK can join in, help her out. What you got, Ida? Hit us with it. Um, Since we went over all the questions, just pick one that you feel most comfortable with in discussing, and then uh, KK can jump in. And make sure you are not on mute. Can you repeat the question? All right, uh, we just want to give us some feedback from your breakout room. So what, what uh, did you all discuss? Yeah, Ida, just any other questions that we talked about for the freedom of speech? Uh, Maybe the one about in school, what, what you could say in school or what you think would be regulated by the, the school. Do... Remember the question was, can you say whatever you want to friends at school or should the school regulate uh, what you say to each other? You can't say anything. Take your time, take a deep breath. You're fine, you're fine. And your group mate can help you out too. Yeah. You want. KK, help her out, teamwork. Or maybe even you, Paisley. I know they, they could be a little shy, you know? No, they're not shy. Okay. <laughs> KK? Talked about, for, the, for that question, we talked about um, how, you should speak to others and it could be really harmful. So the school should regulate rules on how you should talk to others. Okay, awesome. very good. Thank very you. good, KK. Nice, she got it. She got it. I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you some of these, right? <laughs> cool, cool. Appreciate that. Yeah, I know this is this is big and I really appreciate it. Really appreciate you guys stepping up and giving your opinions. This is this can be difficult. Maybe there's some things that we haven't thought about. So we appreciate all this feedback. We love it. We need more of it. We love it. We need more of it. All right. So I think we're getting ready to go into these uh, breakout rooms here. Uh, we have our producer getting ready to set you guys up. You have your next set of questions. We're gonna dig a little bit deeper into this. Uh, when we talk about the uh, Fourth Amendment, uh, search and seizure, and maybe even your Fifth Amendment rights to remain silent, remain silent. Hmm, 
And as we're going right. into the breakout room, I see a couple of officers have answered some questions. So we'll get into those in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to keep one of the youth here in the room with us again. So we'll switch it up this time and we'll uh, have another youth join us. So we can hear from you and get your feedback. Always good to have a youth in there. Who will it be this time? Who would it be this time? Hmm. All right, and so let's see. We are, looks like, moving now into the breakout rooms. Awesome. And away they go. All right, so this was some really good conversation. I thought that was pretty good. Um, it's nice to hear the youth um, share their perspectives. And, um, you know, sometimes the laws don't feel fair or you might feel like you want, you should have a little bit more liberties <laughs> to say or do whatever. But um, I think it's interesting, right? There's a fine line between saying what you feel, um, being quiet, um, expressing yourself in a respectful way, you know, and that can be hard to navigate sometimes for youth or adults to how do you express yourself within the law um, in a way that's not harmful to others, but you still get to, you know, if you disagree with something or you still, you get to, you get to talk about it. You get to talk about it, right. And, and as they say, knowing is half the battle. So knowing what's at your disposal, knowing, you know, empowering yourself about uh, with words, uh, the right words at the right time, you know? And we we talked about, de-escalating situations between police officers and, and the citizens. So you may think that you have the right to say whatever you want, however you want, and, and you most certainly do, but sometimes it comes with um, circumstances or I'm sorry, repercussions with that. But maybe if you learn um, what's in the law and, and conduct yourself within the rules and regulations, the situation does not have to necessarily escalate at all, at all, because there's a mutual understanding and these, having these conversations help us have that mutual understanding, again, between police officers and our youth. You know, and we're talking about uh, critical conversations here. So again, ooh, excuse me, knowing the law and working within the law, and they're on the breakout room, they're talking about uh, search and seizure as many of our young adults may start to drive their vehicle or uh, some of them are taking the bus home. Can you be stopped? Can you be searched? Uh, are there certain circumstances where that applies or under no circumstances do that apply? These are the things that they're, they're talking about in their groups. I wanna uh, look like we have Caleb here. Caleb, uh, one of our youth. Uh, Caleb, are you, yeah. are you with us here? Yes, I'm currently helping cook dinner, but yeah, I'm here. Oh, cooking dinner. All right. Good, good, good. I love it. We're cooking. <laughs> We're cooking. What's yeah. for dinner? You can share his recipe with us. What's for dinner, Caleb? Um, well, it wasn't just me cooking this. Uh, we've had chicken and rice in the crock pot, so we're having that. Um, we have gravy. That's already done. Um, I was just making the rice, finish up the rice, and the broccoli is almost done now so Caleb done right now. is getting ready getting to get ready. out of the house <laughs> as soon as this is over everybody's welcome to Caleb's house everybody <laughs> so, um we have a couple of youth that are still here with us Krishan hey there you gonna be hanging out with us all right you there Krishan Oh, I think they left us. All right, we have oh. Caleb. Yeah, <laughs> we have Caleb. All right. We're gonna keep Caleb with us. It seems that way. All right. So I'm sorry. Quick interjection. Um, I wasn't sure if we wanted to keep Caleb in this main room, um, or if we wanted to. Nah, Krishan. Yeah, I had Krishan in here, but I don't see. He just left. Um, you can you can send him back if uh, if he's not needed in another breakout room, and we'll keep Caleb too. We have two people. If, uh, if that works. Yeah, no, it looks like Krishan just left the Zoom entirely. I didn't put him in, in the room. Okay, all right, we'll keep going with Caleb. Thank you. Yep. 
Don't All talk. Right. Caleb. <laughs> okay. So, Caleb, when we talk about yeah. uh, talk about Fifth Amendment, the right to mm -hmm. remain silent, what does that mean to you? Does it mean anything? Um, yeah, that certainly means something. Um, I think that that basically means that you don't have to speak, um, especially without a lawyer being present, just because that can be, that can be a situation that you're very vulnerable in, just because, you know, if you say the wrong thing or, you know, you detail information that wasn't necessarily something that you should say, then you could be punished for it and that could negatively affect you. So I think that that right to remain silent is definitely, you know, important and something that people should take advantage of when, you know, faced with a situation where, you know, they use it or not situation where they use it, a situation where um, that's right is made available to them. Yeah. Well, I think uh, where well, you can express your, uh, your right to the Fifth Amendment, which is a uh, right to remain silent. So, mm -hmm. um, well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, do you think no uh, expressing or uh, exercising your right to uh, remain silent applies to every situation? Um, like, for example, driving. Does it mm. apply to driving? Um, no. It only really requires, or it's only really a factor when you are arrested or if you're being detained um just because again they obviously feel you've broken some law and you know you don't want to put yourself in a worse off spot you're already in a bad spot having been arrested by a police officer so you know the one thing that you would want to do is just remain silent um make sure that you have all the facts put together before you start speaking on them and you know especially making sure they have a lawyer present just because they more so than just the average everyday person know how to manipulate, or not necessarily man manipulate, but kind of know how to maneuver the law. Hmm. So um, you don't believe that uh, the Fifth Amendment applies necessarily to a traffic stop, and I think if you no. that, does it does it apply? Are the rules the same or different? There, I'm sorry. What if, I'm sorry. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. What, what if you feel like you were stopped? For wrong, wrongly, is that a word? I mean, I mean, I made it up. Stop, <laughs> stop wrongly. All right, all right, so you're speaking of a police officer. Are we, are we still talking in a, in a traffic stop? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. like Caleb's driving. He's doing his thing, right? Yeah. You mm -hmm. feel like you were profiled, maybe, or you feel like you were stopped for no reason. Like, mm -hmm. what? You, how do you um, respond to that? Mm -hmm. Um. I think that's a difficult spot to be in just because, you know, it's really your word against theirs. Um, I say, especially in my position as a young black um, man or a kid at this point, but soon to be a man. Um, I think that you would certainly want to just kind of get out of that situation and not really cause any sort of extra trouble um, because nothing good has ever come from somebody getting into a, verbal back and forth with the police officer um especially if you're black i think that like i said in that situation obviously you can feel like you've been profiled but you know you should kind of handle that once you're out of that situation um if you want to appeal the ruling not the ruling if you want to appeal the decision that the cop made then that's something that can be handled on another day but just trying to get in the way and try to stop them and go back and forth them on the side of the road that's not going to help you and that's just going to more more than likely lead to them um doing something that could negatively impact you now thank you for that caleb and i want to we have our ceo robert jamerson on the line i want to um pull him in on this conversation and um and get some feedback just in terms of youth um that fourth, that fifth amendment, um, rights to remain silent. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and just, we're having this discussion and, you know, you made those comments about, you know, it could be challenging for, for you in your, the way that you feel, um, being a young black man, young man, um, 
in, in profile. So how, what's the appropriate uh, response and how important is it for us to be having these conversations um, with the youth in, in, this, um, in this very um, public way so that more people can see it, right? Yeah, so um, first I'm, I'm excited once again to hear um, just how uh, engaged uh, Caleb is in just this discussion. Um, and I just want to say I thank you just because of um, understanding how important this discussion is. I, you know, I always pose to any group, there's always a why behind um, how, how, how and why did a Fifth Amendment even need to come into play? And what was it meant to do? You know, when you start thinking about um, the, remind, the, 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 the right to not incriminate yourself, <laughs> right? Um, or the right to have a mm -hmm. fair trial. Um, and so when you start thinking about why um, is, is that even necessary um, and why was it necessary when they when it came about and why is it even necessary today? Um, that's that's an even deeper question. So my question to this group would be when, when they were putting this law in place, think about what was occurring and what's occurring today. Why do you think a law was needed um, in that way to be able to um, help people in this way? Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, I don't know, Officer. Do you want to go first? Uh, no, no. I want to hear from you first. If you had <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I think the reason why this law was put in place is because they felt that people were unfairly being forced to speak, and especially for someone who doesn't necessarily know how to articulate themselves the best, that could lead to them being put in, you know, as I mentioned earlier, a very vulnerable situation because they don't know. And I think that that was an issue that they noticed. They were like, okay, there are times where people are being forced to speak. They don't necessarily have the greatest law intellect and they're essentially incriminating themselves without knowing it. So that's probably one of the biggest reasons why this law was put into place. Oh, very, very well said, very well said. Corporal Norwood, you, you were thinking of something as well. I mean, yeah, you know, and and, he jumped on that. He's you are sharp, young man. <laughs> I love it. You are sharp, and you're absolutely you. right with that. Um, uh, so the Fifth Amendment, the right to remain silent, was incorporated uh, because at the time, as uh, Robert was saying, uh, what was going on. So there was a lot of officers who were asking unfair questions, you know, or or leading questions, which we know does not apply or is not allowed in the court of law. And so when you're sitting there and you're being interrogated, a uh, question can be asked in a way that will self-incriminate you uh, without you even knowing about it. For example, I give a real, this is really, really a basic example. If I was asking uh, Caleb a question. So Caleb, when you broke into the, into the bank, how much did you take, right? And maybe mm -hmm. you did or did not break into a bank, right? Maybe you did or did not take anything. And you may answer it in a way that is self-incriminating, like, well, I was in the bank uh, and I grabbed my cell phone, right? So mm -hmm. one can interpret that as you stole a cell phone when that wouldn't necessarily be the case. So you're mm -hmm. right on point with that, with the misleading, being forced to ask questions. And that's just a real, real basic. Uh, the law can get very tricky. And that's it's why we're so kind of here mm -hmm. to, to go ahead and make sure you understand your rights. What are you gonna say, uh -huh. Maria? Applying that, uh, the, the exercise in the right to remain silent means that you're waiting for um, uh, attorney representation, right, to be present so that you can speak under their, uh, rec you know, with their recommendations and, and guidance, if that makes well, sense, correct? Or with that being said, that? there may be times when you should answer questions and when you should not. So it's not necessarily only about having legal representation there with you. It's also about um, uh, the court having to prove beyond a reasonable of doubt that you committed that crime and you do not have to help participate in their case, in their investigation. Uh, the way that is, is the, the, the spirit of the law states that you have to prove something, right? I don't have to help you, you have to prove it. And the judge or the jury 
have to believe that we are in a reasonable doubt. I can remain silent. Again, there may be times when you should answer questions and that's where the attorney comes in. Um, but those would be good questions to answer, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. and that, that's, that leads Caleb by the next question. It's, it's great to learn something for yourself, but it's even um, more impactful when you're able to share it with someone else. Just from the discussions mm -hmm. we've had so far, what would you share with someone else, one of your peers, for instance, that you think they may not have known that you've learned so far? Um, this is just from this discussion or just in general? Yeah, just from this discussion. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely say that I'd let them know that you know, not only do they have the right to remain silent, but they also have the right to replication because that's something that I feel gets understated. And there's a lot of people think that, oh yeah, I don't have the money to pay for love, so I don't get one. That's not the case at all. You absolutely have the right to some form of representation in, you know, a court of law. And I think that knowing that not only allows you to um, fight for your rights, but also to make sure that you are putting yourself in the best position that um, even if you're put into a spot where you are in a courtroom or you are in front of people that you don't necessarily know and they're trying to accuse you of a crime that you don't necessarily think you committed. It's all about knowing your rights and about knowing that at the end of the day, I do have this certain set of privileges that are automatically granted to me. Good, good. So you talked about uh, uh, being arrested, you know, and these mm -hmm. rights of mine. Um, I want to get your thoughts on, say, being approached by a police officer on the street uh, for a potential crime. Do you think that the Fifth Amendment applies then? You haven't been arrested yet. Mm -hmm. You had the right to remain silent then. What are your thoughts? Um, again, I think that's up to the individual. I think that if they're in the, um, if they're in the, I don't want to say mind space, but if they're in the, I guess, right place to talk, if they want to talk, um, or if they have the information available to have a discussion that wouldn't be self-incriminating, I think that that is acceptable and that should be, you know, okay. But if the officer is trying to probe them or trying to get a certain answer out of them, then I think that they absolutely should say, no, I don't want to be in this situation. I don't want to talk to you because I don't know what your intentions are. And I think that you could be trying to set me up or set someone that I know up um, to be wrongfully convicted. Even if that is what they did, I think that that shouldn't necessarily be something that you admit standing on the corner. Mm. Interesting. All right. All right. That is interesting. Uh -huh. um, and then just a uh what is it a caveat or uh just throw this out there that we should do the right thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> right don't break the mm -hmm. law <laughs> yeah all right so uh it was it's 7 26 27 now and we need to start bringing people back from the breakout rooms when we have a great time with caleb here but i know <laughs> we're gonna get everybody back too though yeah, okay. I'll bring the peers back there. Kayla. Yeah, thank you for, okay. for hanging out with us in this uh, this large group session. And for your no answers, this is a lot of fun. Uh, hello. 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 Can I, can I come back to Zoom uh, room seven? Um, I didn't mean to leave. Yep, actually, we're, um, everybody's going to be coming back to this room now. So if you want to hang out, um, that's perfectly fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, so we have a video that we can play while um, we're waiting for everybody to join us. It is our Girls Changing the Game video. And um, we have a, a Girls Changing the Game initiative here at Detroit PAL. And uh, we believe and we have seen through the years that girls who change the game become women who change the world. And so our initiative is in place to encourage girls to play sports, more girls to play sports, to get involved in multiple sports and getting exposure in that way, and um, to engage in the leadership uh, 
experiences and opportunities that we create for for girls. So let's go ahead and let's listen to this video and just see a little bit of what we've done with girls over. Um, it looks like we went on mute. Okay, perfect. All right. So let's let's play it. Let's see it. Girls changing the game. Girls are changing the game at Detroit Pal and around the globe. Opportunities are endless. Voices are heard and girls are becoming leaders of today and tomorrow. How can you change the game for girls at Pal? Visit our website, DetroitPal.org, or contact us at info at DetroitPal.org to help girls in Detroit and all around the world find their greatness. Because girls who change the game become women who change the world. Tear. Tear. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, what you say? So we definitely want to keep girls involved in, in all the activities out there. Um, you know, boys kind of gravitate towards sports and, you know, girls not as much, but as more opportunities come, the more uh, girls show up. So that's pretty that's cool. Right. And we know that um, a lot of women who are in executive roles now have once played sports. Um, as young girls. And so, you know, give, it gives us that confidence. It gives us um, those great skill sets of goal setting, resilience, embracing a healthy lifestyle, accountability, and teamwork um, that they use that carry over into other areas of life. And so um, definitely girls, if you're out there, if you're watching, if your parents are watching, um, if there's a pal near you, whether it's Detroit or Alabama or Houston or um, whether it is uh, anywhere, right? Any of the other um, pals, Columbus, Columbus, Philly. Ohio, um, we have you know tons of pals around the nation, um, and you know we are creating that space for you um, to discover, build your own, build your, build you, right? And that's what it's all about. Maria, did you play sports uh, growing up? I did play sports. Uh, sure. What did I play? I played soccer. I was a goalie and nobody got in my house. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, really nobody. Nobody, no nobody. one goal. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you um, believe her, give her some fingers. If you believe her. Uh, 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 okay. Um, I also <laughs> ran track and that taught me about um, personal best and finishing the race. And so I used that as an adult, pushing myself when, I, when I'm uncomfortable and I don't want to go on with whatever push through right and so track taught me that Let's we have it. one of the best track um, programs in the nation here at detroit pal so shameless I, I plug <laughs> join us uh, on december 8th and then i'm uh, oh, sorry december 6th and um also was a cheerleader so that was cool you did everything and look how you turned out see ladies on this call maria is a great example of what it, you can become when you participate in sports and other youth enrichment programs. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on. So we were talking about uh, uh, Fourth Amendment, um, unreasonable search and seizure. We were talking about the Fifth Amendment, the right to remain silent, and how those two tie into each other. What does it mean to a student? Is it different from what it means to an adult? So let's get right into this. You know. For this one, we're going to start off with Officer Paisley's group, all right? Okay. She got cut a little short last time, her and another group. So we're going to start off with her. Officer Paisley, what's happening? In all right, thank you. Woods? Thank you. So um, but we're going to let KK start us off this time. Um, you know, I wanted to be more about the kids. So KK is going to start us off, just give us an overview of our um, search and seizures and what we talked about Um KK, maybe you can talk about, uh, we got really more involved in the police stop and the searching. So maybe start off with that one, KK, when getting pulled over by the police. Mm. I came up with different scenarios on whether a police officer has a reason to pull you over or not. And if, you, and if they did or didn't, you have what reaction 
do you have to have and how you should act during your process? Excellent. So, so what are some of the takeaways you had real quick? What was one of the, the biggest takeaway that you had uh, when it comes to a police stop? If you like to share. And Ida, you can jump in and help her out if you like. Um, What, what stood out? What did you remember most about the traffic stop? They have they had the right to pull you over and ask you what's your name and did they have to have a reason to pull you over though? Yeah, if you were speeding or missed the green light, no. If you ran a red light. For a traffic violation, that would be a reason. That would awesome. be a reason. That's great. Cool. Cool. Thank you very much for that. We love it. We love it. We love it. And what if what if they didn't? What if you feel like they didn't have the right to pull you over? Then what? Yeah. Anybody can answer. Yeah, Bridget. anyone can answer that. So what you asked Maria, if they, if, if they got pulled over and they felt like they weren't doing anything wrong, uh, right. do they have to give up any information? Is that what you're asking? Or what, what is that? Right. Asking? That's exactly it. Do you have the right? Um, to can I topic? share? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, I do believe that uh, if a police officer does not have uh, any proper reason for pulling you over, then you don't have to show identifications. You have to show no records, I do believe. And you have the right to call for their supervisor if they unlawfully put you over. Mm. All right. Is that true? Mm. For, Corporal Norwood, can you give well, us some insights? So I would say that driving is not a right. It is a privilege. And so if you are uh, pulled over by a police officer, you have to at least give your driver's license. You may not think you were doing anything wrong, uh, but they, the officer does have to have a legal reason for pulling you over. And, and I'll just add one more thing to that. Um, the officer may or may not dis, uh, disclose that information prior to receiving your identification. He does have to have a legal reason for pulling you over, uh, but he may have to explain that at a later date in the court of law if it goes to court. So I need you guys to make sure that we remember that. Uh, driving is a privilege, and you must surrender your driver's license if you're getting pulled over. Okay. Yes. And what's the reason. appropriate re what's the appropriate response if they feel like they were wrongfully pulled over? How should they handle that if they're stopped like in that situation? So that's what the courts are for. The good thing about it is uh, in Detroit and many other police departments, uh, there's body cameras, there's things being worn, uh, and if you feel like you were wrongfully pulled over, uh, it is your right to go ahead and make a court date and discuss it at the court. It is not advisable to have a, a heated debate on the street with the police officer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. So if that was the case, you would um, do what you're asked, listen at the point of the stop. And then if you feel like you need to address wrongful treatment or whatever, then you do that in the court with the judge. And, and I add one more thing to that, Maria, uh, failing to surrender the proper credentials, that in itself could lead to an arrest. Okay. So you do have to get show your license, even if you don't think that you were stopped uh, for a, a real reason. Yep. Or, or you run the risk of actually being arrested. Yes. Got That's it. Good. Okay. That's good. Good clear clarification. Mm -hmm. All right. We have lots of um, comments in the comment section Yolanda says she played football and ran track okay. Medina uh runs track she played basketball she plays volleyball and swim Ida played basketball um Brenda played tennis and golf Kayana plays volleyball ran track and does cheerleading uh, Autumn played tennis and she also plays the ukulele <laughs> that's my sport way I just throw that out there that's like a little yeah. little guitar, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Heavenly sounds. 
um, volleyball and basketball was Kim. And Kira played soccer. She won soccer, uh, soccer, was it championship for soccer or basketball? One of those. She won a championship with Detroit Pal, actually. And yeah. she was a cheerleader um, with Detroit Pal. And then Victor played soccer, golf, and hockey, and baseball. And Paris played volleyball. So lots of athletes here. Um, very cool. Thanks for sharing, everybody. Cool, cool, cool. Let's get to our next group. Uh, we were talking about search and seizure and Fifth Amendment, the right to remain silent. Is our group cool? All right. Yeah. Officer Dorsey, was that you? Who said that? Yes, Miss Yolanda, was our group going on this question or no? Yes, uh, that's yeah. great. All right, well, let's go with it then. Let's see what, what came out of that group. Um, so we Harris. have Harris and Pierce. <laughs> Harris and Pierce. I like both of those names. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know Paris has a ton to say. <laughs> well, we would like to hear it. <laughs> do you want me to throw out one of the questions, Paris, or do you oh, just yeah, want to yeah. go for it? Okay. So let's go with the last question because you kind of got cut off. So that last question said that can school officials, parents, or police search your personal social media without your permission? And that was the one you kind of got cut off on. But I know you had a ton yes. of things that you wanted to say. All That's right. <laughs> the floor Mr. is yours. Mr. listen. Um, I feel like they shouldn't because it's yours. First off, so you're you're on uh, mute there, Paris. There you go. I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to uh, make sure everybody else was it loud. So they, they shouldn't but, check the social media. Go ahead. I, yeah, I feel like they shouldn't search on social media because it's yours. It's your personal social media, and they don't have a right because, like, oh. Because it's yours, like it's yours. Just like I feel like teachers shouldn't take your phone because they don't pay the bill because it's yours. I feel like people shouldn't search your book bag because it's yours. Mm -hmm. I just feel like your belongings is your belongings, and no one should and should like touch your things. And social media is open to the world, but like everything else is not like. Say for instance, you texting your friend. That is not for the police to see. So I'm going to ask everybody else in here. So we all heard, heard what Paris said. If you think the school should be allowed to check your book bag, uh, type in the chat, agree, disagree, or however you feel about that, right? And you said they should, the school should not uh, be allowed to check your cell phone. Is that what you said, Paris? All right. So yes. if you agree about the cell phone or the bag, just go ahead and throw your comments in there. It look like a lot of people are saying agree. We got a couple of, it depends. Can the school check your bag? Can the school check your phone? Oh, so it's a lot of agrees. Oh, oh, a disagree popped up. Oh, you're on mute, uh, Maria. Uh, we got a kind of agree, it depends. Disagree, another disagree. Hmm. Hmm. So real quick, uh, Medina, real quick, why do you disagree with that? Um, I disagree because I remember that um, sometimes at my school, some kids, they post things on social media of other people. Mm -hmm. And during the school, and sometimes they have their phones when they're not supposed to be. And I remember that something happened at one of my brother's football games. He played for the Westside Cubs. And at their field once, there was a shooting that happened. And there wasn't any police. So everybody, I wasn't there, but my brothers and my parents were there. I was staying at my grandma's house. And a lot of stuff happened. And they were, um, the police checked the, um, the, the social medias for those kids 
and they were like 13, 14, 15. And they checked their social media and they had posted about going to the place and they were set it up mm -hmm. and social media. And that's what the evidence was to in like, if the ad ever went to court, something as big as federal court, they would have that for social media. And mm -hmm. that makes sense that they would, should be able to check their social media. So that's really interesting because you kind of went against the grain about searching your bags and phones. I want to ask uh, Officer Scott something real quick. You made a really good comment in our uh, thread there. Can you share what you put in the comment there, Officer Scott? Yes, um, I stated as long as the school is responsible for the student's safety, they should be able to search the bag. Why? Because a bag can be holding a weapon. And if the school does not search these students and these things happen, the school is liable for whatever happens to the students because their parents isn't around, the parents aren't around. So as long as the parents aren't around, the school is who is responsible for the safety of the students. They are their caregivers at the moment. So they have to do what's necessary to protect the kids. So I would imagine that there could be some circumstances where uh, searching may not be allowed, and there may be some uh, exigent circumstances where the police need to do what they need to do. I would encourage each and every one of you to know what the rules are in your school, right? This is where your voice comes in, into play. And knowing your rights, what's fact, what's fiction, you need to know. All right. Absolutely. All right. So we are uh, going to be wrapping up in about 15 minutes. want to take a break in the responses um, just to show one, um, what are we here for? Again, just a quick visual of our rest slide because um, we want to establish a, um, a, 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 I guess, a rest in the, in the community. We want to establish rest. Um, the opposite of social unrest, right? And um, that's what, if we have done our job here, um, this is what we are gonna accomplish. And REST stands for removing implicit bias, establishing empathy between police and youth, because when we understand one another through these conversations, we get empathy. Um, and that changes the way we treat each other, right? When we remove that implicit bias, we see each other uh, for who we are as individuals, we, it changes the way we treat each other. And when uh, youth can bring those solutions and let their voices be amplified, we know we've done our job. And so and when these conversations are happening on a national level and uh, we're bridging the gap and uh, removing those biases and creating that empathy on a national level, um, our country is going to be in a better position. So just keeping in mind what our, um, our aim is, our focus, and, and what success looks like. And then we want to show really quickly, we have a turkey. Um, giveaway that's coming up. Actually, it's a holiday give back and I uh, wanna show a quick video for those who are on the call and in Detroit um, for this particular uh, giveaway. Um, we did a turkey giveaway in March and um, wanna show a quick video of that and then we'll share the opportunity again. We have to um, go and get uh, Thanksgiving um, vouchers and uh, supplies that have been made available by the Pistons organization. So let's go ahead and play that video first. I see that reaction by Victor, Mason, and Jose. <laughs> oh, if you can hear me. A lot of turkeys that were given away that day.
We had a, a lot of help from the community. Uh, community. All right, we can cut that video. Go ahead and cut it. Thank you. All right, so that was just a quick video. We wanted to show Detroit Pal is doing great things in the community. Bessemer Pal is doing great things in the community. Um, Houston Pal is doing great things in the community. Columbus Pal is doing great things in the community. Um, we are working to serve the needs of the people. And um, that was an example of our, our uh, particular organization coming together to do that and provide 2000 turkeys to the community. Um, again, we have opportunity for everyone on this call um, who will like one. Um, I know some people already claim their vouchers for the Pistons Give Back. Um, while supplies last, you can reach out to Janae Gordon. Um, and her, her email will be in the text box. And this is for um, our Detroit participants. Um, but uh, contact her if you want to get a Pistons um, Thanksgiving voucher for uh, supplies for the holiday and um, household supplies as well. Okay. Nice. And I know we had a lot of questions coming in. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, Maria, uh, we will be answering these questions, uh, whether it's here or on social media within the next week. We'll try to get all of them. We'll try to get a police officer or the right person to answer each and every one of your questions. So don't forget to check us out on social media uh, sometime this week. And I'm sure that your question will be answered. And I want to let our CEO come on for just a moment um, just to address quickly <laughs> um, just regarding the giveaway. Hello everyone, once again, we're thinking about um, what do we do at Detroit PAL? First thing we do is we try to be the best at collaboration, right? And our first collaborative partner of choice is the Detroit Police Department, right? So you see them here um, supporting the programs in a very uh, special way. Then the second thing we're trying to do is address the social economic, health and wellness and educational needs we have in the community. And so you're asking why is Detroit PAL partnering with the Pistons to help with turkeys is that we know that there are some families that are facing some difficult times. Um, all of us have been there at some point in our lives and to be able to be the need that people need at that time, um, we're just thankful to be that person and to be someone that can connect people to the resources that they're in need of. So with that, we hope you take us up on that. You may not be in need, but you may have a family member that's in need to be a blessing going somewhere to happen is a special thing. And so we hope you take that up from uh, what you've learned from Detroit PAL and realize that once you get, it's not just about you getting, but also how can you help someone else? So um, thank you, Maria. Thank you. And again, Janae, um, Janae Gordon, her email is jgordon at detroitpal.org. Um, she will um, set aside a voucher for you while supplies last and you can pick it up tomorrow from 10 a.m. put that in our group, that information in the, uh, in the group chat? Yep, we have the email there already. And um, oh. also um, we can, you guys can pick them up tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the um, giveaway is taking place on Thursday, November 18th this week at 5.30 p.m. Okay. Just for you. So you Janae will give you more details. You just email her, she'll give you more details just regarding where and uh, where to pick up and the voucher and where to pick up the um, supplies. All right, wonderful. Thank you all for joining us for that, for this. And let's keep going. Um, we can get through the rest of these um, responses. I want to throw a quick shout out to Officer Span coming all the way across the country. Shout out to you. Appreciate you being here, brother. All right. Uh, so uh, let's, you know what? Let's go with the uh, games again, you know? We haven't heard from you in a while. Well, what's going on with your group, man? Uh oh, you trying to catch me off guard. Trying to catch you, know. you off guard. You gotta, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. There you go. There you go. Uh, so uh, let me get ready. Uh, <laughs> so we are group four. And we had we also had that question. I heard somebody else read that question. We uh can school officials, parents, or police search your personal social media without your permission. Uh, we had a uh, great conversation. Allison and Jeremiah, they are uh, two, uh, two wonderful, wonderful uh, youth. So, uh, Allison, you want to tackle that subject when you were in school? Definitely. About um, that? 
So I said uh, that I think searching social media is circumstantial, especially when it comes to school. But if it's any other thing, then it could be because, for instance, you're not going to hire somebody that um, he gave me this example, Officer or uh, Gaines gave me the example of if I'm the CEO of a head or I'm a head chef at a company, I want to hire other chefs that I know are going to take the time and are going to create the image that I want to create when it comes to my food business. And I want, I'm pretty sure if I'm going to create a certain image that that person in their social media, at least once or twice, at least once or twice is gonna have posted something about them wanting to be in the food business or at least they even like food or liking to cook. But if I don't see any of that on social media or I don't see a well-rounded individual that I know I could depend on when it comes to stuff like that, I'm not gonna hire them and put them in my group. But I don't think it's fair. Um, it's different when it comes to something that's not a professional standpoint, because for instance, with schools, I don't think it's fair for teachers to take phones. I don't think it's fair for teachers to do things like, um, searching through their kids' social media, even though they have absolutely no reason or no permission. But if there's something like making sure the child is safe or making sure the school environment is safe because there have been school shootings or bomb threats or stuff like so-and-so started the fight and so-and-so instigated it and made sure everybody knew that it was in B Hall stuff like that people need to search for and people need to check. But if it's nothing that goes situational, then I don't think it's very fair for somebody to just randomly be doing searches or anything like that because of nosiness or curiosity. That That's completely unfair. I didn't give you permission, so what would be the reason? definite reason is what you're saying. A definite reason uh, to go through uh, someone's social media or, or to remove phones. Yeah. And I'd also keep in mind that it is not necessarily your right, and I'm not disagreeing with you or anyone else who feels the same way, it's not necessarily your right to have a phone in school. So we got to keep that in mind as well. All um, right, so we have a couple more people get through, but let's yep, see. We have a question uh, that's going to get a gift card if you have the answer in the chat first. You are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready in the chat. I'm about to ask, ask the question. Why was Detroit Pal started? Uh oh, we've heard this before. First, first answer, correct answer in the group chat wins a gift group card. Chat, in the group chat, and I want to get to group six next. Come on, put it in the group chat. Better be quick. All right. And youth participants. Yep. Why was Detroit Pal started? Hmm. All right. <laughs> we have talked about this before. And five, and the winner. four, three, two, one. This question is closed. <laughs> All right, Norwood, who's our winner? Who said it well, first? Well, let's see. Uh, well, people said to connect the community. Mm, OK, all right, to connect the community. I think I'm going to go with, uh, oh, to be great in the community? Mm, not quite. To connect the community to the police organizations. I think I like that answer the best. Uh, that's from Medina. Yes, to connect, to build better relationships between the police and the community. I like Medina. Perfect. That's it. All right, Medina, you get a gift card. We'll make sure she gets that to you. Hold on, she don't get one without the, without the hands. It don't work like that. She gotta hey. get some hands. What you talking about? <laughs> right. <laughs> good, good. I right, imagine right. we'll be doing this more and more, right? Yes, and we also have a gift card that's going to go to um, our youth comment of the day, which is from Timothy McKay when he spoke about freedom of speech and, exp and, and expression at school. So, Timothy, thank you for your comments and participation. You are going to receive a gift card for that as well. Thank you. So, right. uh, do we have that comment real quick? I'm just curious, what was it? Do we have it? Timothy, what did you say? You got three seconds. What did you say? What was it regarding? It was uh, regarding freedom of speech 
um, and expression at school. It was. I, I, I don't even remember what I said. Well, um, well John um, pointed it out. So. <laughs> okay. If he has. Um, any I kind of remember if this will help. He uh, talked about how uh, the kids at school should be able to express themselves through the clothing they wear and be able to express how they feel at certain times. For being a good team team member, Jeremiah, you're going to get a gift card too. What? <laughs> Right, so we have a few like more. Oprah uh, up in here. <laughs> you yeah, everybody get a gift card. Okay, hands. That's right. We see some hands. All right, so we have a few more to get through. Let's uh, go to group six next. Who's that? Uh, Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yep, yep, yep. Do we have um, an officer in that group or no? It was Officer uh, Jordan. I had to be the assistant facilitator because he didn't. He was on duty. Got it. Okay. Go for didn't it. have the questions. And he did a great job. Um, great Medina, job. Is that her name? Medina, All right. Awesome. Medina and Timothy were both in my group. So congratulations to them for winning. I want to point that out. <laughs> um, but um, Medina or Timothy, um, I would like for uh, one or both of you, if we have time to go through what the, the little bit that we talked about. in. Our All right. Let's, let's go with one representative. One. Yep. Uh, I can go. All right. Um, well, I just want to start off by saying um, I've never been to school. I've been homeschooled my whole life. So when it comes to like how rules should be there, I'm not exactly experienced with, uh, you know, school rules and stuff and how it normally is. So um, one of the things we talked about was um, whether uh, students should be able to wear uh, uh, clothes that express their feelings. And I said that they should be able to do that, um, you know, as long as it's not, um, you know, nude images or stuff like that. And if it's something, if it says something that a parent has a complaint or a student has a complaint about, then they could talk to the school board about it and they could get that situation handled, so. All right, thank you for that. Great answer. Big Tim. <laughs> Can I say that to you? All right, uh, we, so um, right now, so it's 8.01 and we're running a little bit behind. So I wanna try to get to every group. So go ahead, if you still have something, please put it in the chat and um, we'll make sure that we reference it, okay? Let's go to our next group. All right, so we have Miss um, Siobhan Young. Yep. Hello. Um, so our discussion was, and uh, Victor is gonna be the representative for our, our group, if you if you purchase a bag, should your parents feel the right to check it, or should you have privacy to that bag? Mm. Parents bought the bag. Can the parents check the bag? What you say, Victor? Are you there? What'd you yeah. Say, so we were talking about if one of us bought a bag with our own money, and then is it if the per parents' permission? gets to check inside the bag, which is the answer is yes, because you may not know if the kid may be hiding like weapons, drugs, bad stuff that they might sneak into school. We also talked about um, vice versa. If um, going to school, should the school have the right to check your bags? And we stated, Victor, would you like to answer that as well? Sure. Um, it's a good thing that they, um, like almost each school, they have a metal detector so they can detect what's inside their backpack, like anything that's bad. Like I said, like drugs, weapons, mm -hmm. and like metal stuff that isn't allowed. So you agree that they should, that the school should be allowed to check your bag. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, all right. If you don't mind, can I touch up on this subject a little bit? 
You got 30 seconds. Uh, so basically, my group, uh, we came upon this question, too, and we talked about how uh, while we're there, there are legal guardians, basically, and they have watched their responsible for our safety so if they're responsible for our safety while they're there they have all rights to check everyone uh because they're making sure everyone is there is safe and it's their responsibility while we were there so safety definitely plays a major role when we're talking about being in schools and and uh, other institutions other public places especially because remember most schools are public and even the ones that are not public have their own certain rules that you agree to or your parents agree to when they get there. So you have to keep that in mind. I'm sure many of you signed a code of conduct and there's rules and regulations and, and, and everything like that. So don't forget about you agree to those terms and conditions when we're talking about search and seizure and your rights. All right, it's been a quite a day here. Did we hear from everybody, Maria? Was that everybody? We still need to hear from three more people quickly. Okay. Um, Dale Dorsey, uh, who was in your group and who was your representative? We went already. Oh, you went. Okay, perfect. Yes. All right. And then Odessa. And if you're okay, so our question was um, if, you, if you're in school, and a strong odor of marijuana is smelled, um, and should those group of students around that odor uh, be searched? And I believe Kayana, she was gonna um, express her opinion with that question. Real quick, because you broke up a little bit, I wanna make sure that everyone heard that. So there's a group of students in school and yeah. there's a strong uh, scent of marijuana amongst that group. I think you and your question was, should they be allowed to search the group? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, I believe Kayana, she was going to uh, express her opinion on that question. Yes. I'm sorry. Hold on. Her, she's freezing. I appreciate you translating that for us. Thank you so much. And That's while she's translating, I'll just say to Medina, um, if you have oh. Um, I think it is a yes. right for them to check the bags, you know, just to check to make sure if they have any weed or you're, they're not hiding anything. Yeah, I think it, they do have a right. You know, just if the, if the police have a gut feeling that they don't trust something about it, they do. They should have that right. Interesting. You know, because some people say no, shouldn't search. Some people say yes. We have a lot of opinions. Again, know the rules of your school because what you think is a right may not necessarily be accurate okay and what were you getting ready to say maria oh i was just saying for medina because i wanted to hear her feedback and um i know we didn't have time to hear from every youth and um over the uh you know their vocals <laughs> but want to get that feedback for you so please put it in the chat uh, so looking forward to hearing what you had to say um, or reading what you had to say. All right, our next one is, um, did we already go with Odessa? I think we just talked to Odessa. So last is George. Officer George. I'm Mr. here Muni. for Officer George. We had amazing Joe. And we had the same question as a strong smell of marijuana in the hallway where a group of students are standing. Should everyone be searched? Joe, uh, Joe gave his um, awesome opinion. And I think he had a great, he had great intake I think it was explain furthermore from Officer George. So I'm gonna let Joe take over. Big Joe. Yeah, so uh, I said that um, uh, they, they we agreed that they should be searched as a group, especially uh, Officer George brought up a term, a uh, reasonable suspicion, which basically means like if there's, if, there's, if there's reasonable suspicion that someone is committing a crime, then you should be able to search them, which I totally agree with. That applies to a person on the street as well as when you get pulled over in a car. And um, uh, analogy I use is just because, like, if there's a bunch of people around a dead body, just because someone has the most blood on their hands doesn't mean they do the crime. Mm, that's good. Mm, mm, reasonable suspicion, another term. I like that. I love the education that's taking place. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it. learning too. Uh, good, good, because adults are more than welcome to learn. So that's. We loving it. That's the purpose of this conversation. 
uh, so that we all can learn from each other. We know what's on your mind. We know what's important to you. And then today you learn a little bit about what's fact and what's fiction. <laughs> All right. So I want to thank everybody for sticking in, sticking it out with us for an extra uh, eight to 10 minutes here as we wrap up. Um, and we are uh, grateful. All of your feedback was insightful. Love to hear the youth voice. Um, we're going to thank you for those questions during the cop stop. We're taking those and we're going to incorporate them uh, throughout the next uh, four more weeks. And you'll see them either on here and or on our social media. So look out for that. And then um, to our partners that are on here, please share your um, videos, your um, one pagers or just visuals of things that are great that are taking place in your city or in your state, because we want to um, be able to showcase that in this space as well. And um, we want to just make a quick announcement that there's no session for tomorrow. Um, I'm not, no, sorry, next week, no session next week. <laughs> <laughs> because of the Thanksgiving holiday. So uh, we will skip this uh, next week on Tuesday and, and we'll come back uh, the following Tuesday. And we'll look forward to seeing you all again for our next uh, conversation where we talk about social media's role mm. on how we uh, view uh, and what, it, what our perspective is of police officers. And so um, we're excited to have that discussion. And Corporal Norwood, do you wanna close us out? Yeah, well, I hope that everyone here got a chance to learn a little bit and share a little bit, whether it was in the large group or in your breakout rooms. Um, I want to give thanks again to all the police officers that are donating their time, all the scribes that are donating their time, and to all of our sponsors. And kids, our youth, if you've learned something today, please share it with your other students, your other friends, your family members, because we want to reach as many people as we can so that we can empower each and every one of you and our community. And together we can do better. All right. And with that being said, I want to just see, you know how we do on critical conversations real quick. I need to feel that energy because it's got to last for two weeks, right? We're going to get those turkeys. You're going to send in your email. Uh, we got gift cards to pass out. I mean, we're doing a whole lot of stuff and we can't do it without each and every one of you. All right. We'll see you in two weeks. All right, so Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 Bye.